Thank you, Jesus, for another wonderful day. Blessed be your name, O God. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we magnify your holy name, you are God. Father, we thank you for another faithful day. We thank you because this is the day you, O God, has made. And we thank you because we shall be glad in it. We shall rejoice in it because your mercy over us is great. We bless your holy name. Almighty Father, we honor you even this our, we ask your glory to come among us in the name of Jesus. Father, let your mercy speak for us today. Draw us close to you, O God. Father, we draw nigh unto you, Lord. Draw unto us. Let your spirit have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. In this service, have your way. Speak to our hearts. Touch to men and women. Talk to men and women. Touch their hearts. Break hearts of stones and let this word be available let this word bring goodness let this word even bring goodness and a change and a transformation into our lives in the name of jesus lord i thank you because i know you have good thoughts for us you have good plans for us and i know as many men as many women as many sons as many daughters that will be listening to me they will hear you as many sons as many daughters as many men as many women that will hear me they will hear you and they will see you they will behold your glory today in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah i welcome you to church in jesus name i'm going to make a start by reading psalm 51 psalm 51 please turn there with me psalm 51 please can you connect let's do this real quick family we're not going to take too long today hallelujah let's join let's join let's join praise the name of the lord please share this service encourage others to join wake your neighbor up it's time to go to church it's time to go to church hallelujah thank you jesus psalm number 51 let us see beginning from verse 1 the bible says have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest behold i was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 7. Purge me with high soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Hallelujah. Create in me a new heart, a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Verse 14 and verse 15. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Father, I ask of you in the name of Jesus, that as many that have been joining this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, as you open up their lips, Almighty God, I ask in the name of Jesus that Lord God, you will fill it with praise in Jesus' name. Today, I'm going to be preaching on a subject I have entitled, Mercy is Available Now. Say that with me. Mercy is Available Now. Can you say that with me one more time? Mercy is is available now the mercy of god is available for you my brother my sister the mercy of god is available for you my family the mercy of god is available for you my friends the mercy of god is available for you even right now 
And that is why I read this scripture to you in Psalm 51. Now here is your almighty God extending his hands to you, extending his hand to me through his son, Jesus Christ, that I can live, that you can live happily with him in this world and that I shall be happy. He wants you to live happily in this world and also in eternal life, to have eternal life. That is why God is extending mercy to you. Now, I have defined mercy last Sunday, but I want to give you a refresher. I say mercy is defined as compassion. Mercy is defined as forgiveness that is shown towards a person whom it is in their power to show or to, to, to show power, to show forgiveness, who it is in their power to punish. If it is in my power to punish you, if it is in my power to harm you, I can show you mercy. A person who is below me cannot show me mercy. It is only a person in whom you, are, you have the power. And God has power over all his creatures. Hallelujah to Jesus. That is why his mercy is always speaking over you. The mercy of God is always speaking over my life, always speaking over your life. Mercy is always saying, no, Lord. When you should be judged and when you deserve judgment from the Almighty God, mercy of the Almighty God, say no. His mercy, they are new every day. And that's how we sing that song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies, you see, His mercies, they are new every day, every moment. They are new towards me, towards you, every moment of the day. And that's why we're saying His mercy is always, He's a compassionate God. He's a God that is a forgiving God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank God for his goodness and his mercies towards you. For the enemy would have consumed you, my friend. It is not your prayer. It is not your fasting. It is not your, your, all your different good works. It is the mercy of God. And that's why the Bible says it is by his mercies that we are not consumed. His mercy is always saying no over you. When you should be condemned, when you deserve to be condemned, mercy said no. When your enemy should have overrun you, hallelujah to Jesus. When the enemy should have come against you to overrun you, when the enemy is looking at you, when they should have overrun you, the mercy of God is saying no. Even when the enemy has an opportunity, the mercy of God is always speaking for you. The mercy of God is always saying no, no, no. Give him another chance. Give him another opportunity. When your enemy keeps asking God, Lord, when are you going to judge him? When the enemy is asking God every time, Lord, when are you going to kill him? Permit me. Just give me room to kill him. Like the devil went to, like Satan went before God and said, Lord, let me, let me touch Job and see if you're not cursed to your face. But mercy is always saying no. The mercy of God is the one that is speaking over your life. What about that sickness? When you people have given up on you to die, when that sickness appears like you are not going to recover from it, is it not the mercy of God that is speaking for you, my friend? Is it not the mercy of God that is speaking for you, son and daughter of the Almighty God? It is the mercy of God, hallelujah. You see, when I say mercy, mercy is always saying no, no to judgment. Mercy is always saying no, no to condemnation. Mercy of God is always saying no, no, no. Every time when God should be judging you, should be judging me. Hallelujah to Jesus. And if you see pity, when you say, when you talk about mercy, you talk about pity. You talk about love. When you talk about uh, um, um, a mercy of God, you are talking about forgiveness. You are talking about compassion that you show towards you, show towards me. When I deserve judgment, when I deserve condemnation in the hands of your magical, or when I deserve judgment, when I deserve to be harmed by the enemy, the mercy of God is the one that is always speaking for me. And you know that mercy will always rejoice against judgment. God prefers to have mercy over you than to judge you. I will tell you all that he needs from you. God Almighty, all he requires from you from me is to turn to him. And now if you go to James chapter number 2, look at what verse 13 says. He says, for he shall have mercy. Let me read it. For he shall have judgment without mercy that had showed no mercy. And then he says in the last verse, he says, and mercy rejoice against judgment mercy is always happy mercy is always giving the mercy of god will speak in your life my brother you see when darkness when sin when death when they come to take you away when the enemy introduced sin into your life that warranted the judgment of your almighty god is it not the mercy of god that is speaking for you 
I said last Sunday, I preached on enduring mercy of God. Is it not the enduring mercy of God? The enduring mercy of God. And that's why God has the capacity to say, when your neighbor sins against you, how many times should you say you should forgive him? 70 times, 7 times. The guy says, is that in a year? I said, no, in a day. So if God demands you to show mercy to your neighbor 70 times, 77 times, can you imagine how enduring the love of God is? And I say, mercy is available to you now. I will tell you why you need mercy, why I need mercy. You need mercy, my brother. You need the mercy of God in your life, my sister. It is the mercy of God that covers you. It is the mercy of God that shields you. It is the mercy of God that protects you because he is saving you unto the end. I, I, I always say this, not with pride, but with gratitude to God. Some of us, we were rushing with joy towards hell. But the mercy of God preserved us. The, can you imagine if God permitted the enemy to kill you? To waste your life before you turn to Jesus Christ? Before you accepted Jesus? Do you know where you will be today? Ah, thank God for his mercy. All the things that you are running about here and there today. All the money, the cars, the house, the bills you want to pay. If God has not shown you mercy. Ah, la boro to baru If God has not shown you mercy, where would you be? Mercy rejoiced against judgment. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. There is what? There is therefore now no condemnation against you, my brother. Because the love of God, because the mercy of God is now speaking in your life. You will make it in Jesus' name. You have started. God has started a good work in your life. He that has begun a good work in your life, he will see you to the end in the mighty name of Jesus. He will preserve you. He will keep you. He will not Take you halfway and abandon you in the mighty name of Jesus. The enemy shall not prevail over you. They shall not prevail over your household. Because of the mercy of your mighty God, you are shielded, you are protected against every evil in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is how I know that the rod of the enemy shall not rest upon you. It shall not rest upon you. Sicknesses and diseases. Ah, no, in the name of Jesus, whatever disease is running around in town that is killing people in town in the name of Jesus, because of the mercy of God over you, it will preserve you unto that perfect day. It will not come near you. It will not come near your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, my brother. Listen to me, my brother, my sister. God is rich in mercy. Did you know that? God Almighty is rich in mercy. He is willing to give you much more because he is rich in mercy. Look at what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2. I will read verse 4 to you. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse number 4. Praise the name of God. Please turn down your Bibles. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 4. Hallelujah. God bless you. Ephesians chapter 2. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. Yes. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 4. The Bible says there, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great, what? For his great love, wherewith he loved us. You see, God is rich in mercy. It is the richness of that mercy that caused him what? To love you and to save you. Look at what it says in verse 5. When we were dead in sins, <laughs> he quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. By mercy, you are saved. By grace, by the goodness of God, are you saved. It's not because you are good that you are saved. Hallelujah. Now look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible then says, because God is available, he wants to show you mercy. The Bible is asking you, asking me to come boldly to the throne of grace. Look at it. Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may what? Obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You see, what you need, my brother, what you need, my sister, is the grace of God. What you need, my brother, what you need, what I need, what my family needs for healing, for deliverance, when you call and ask for the mercy of the Almighty God, ah, la da baro de li bahada. the Bible says he is rich in mercy, he is rich in love. Ah, why don't you take advantage of what God is rich in? Why don't you take advantage of what God is rich in? What he has abundance of, what he has excess of. You know that lady sang that song, he said excess love. What he has excess, what he has in, in, in abundance, why don't we take advantage of that? You know, we go for the riches of God. But the Bible says he is rich in mercy. He is rich. When you say somebody is rich, you know, you can define their riches. Is he rich in money? Is he rich in good health? Is he rich in mercy? Is he rich in compassion? Is he rich in cars? Is he rich in measured in houses? You can measure somebody's riches or richness. The Bible says, God is rich in mercy. 
take advantage of that wealth it's available for you and that's why the bible says in hebrews that i read to you hebrews chapter 4 verse 6 says let us therefore do what come boldly come boldly to the throne of grace that what that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help you see when you obtain the mercy of god grace will speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus, may grace speak for you. May the grace of God speak for me. Okay, I will say amen to that. May the grace of the Almighty God speak for me. May it speak for you. May it speak in your family as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the grace of the Almighty God speak for you. You know, the word of God that we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Come boldly. Come boldly. See, the boldness is not a result of your own righteousness. Hello? No. That boldness is not in, in, in your works or in the things that you have done. No. That boldness is in the finished works of Jesus Christ, who is your advocate. Can I hear your email? Jesus Christ is my advocate. The Lord Jesus is your advocate. I say Yeshua Hamashiach is your advocate the lord is my advocate the lord who is rich in mercy can you imagine the the this this how good this god is on the one hand <laughs> oh oh that man may know that god is good the bible says there god is rich in love not only is he rich he is the one drawing you to take advantage of his riches he is the one calling you we know what rich men do. They build fences around their riches so that you don't know they are rich. But God is telling you, I am rich in mercy. Come. Come boldly to my throne of grace. Come and obtain grace. I love you. Come. That sickness, that pain, that affliction is nothing compared to my mercy. It's nothing compared to the grace, to the love that I have for you. When you come and obtain the mercy of God, I will show you some examples that when you obtain mercy, that sickness will go. Let me say it again. I will show you in the Bible. When you obtain mercy, your story will change. When you obtain mercy, you will see the love of God as finding an expression in your life. I will show you in the scripture. Don't believe me. I will show you from the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, come boldly, not based on your own righteousness, not because of your own finished works, not because you are beautiful. Who made you beautiful anyway? Who created you? Who made you beautiful? Not because you are rich. Who gave you those riches? No, that is not the basis why you are coming to him. Your boldness that he's saying is not based on your own ability. It is on the mercy of God. And when you think about it, you have come. You have to come to the Almighty God to receive the mercy that is available. That is the number one condition. You want your story to change? You want the unemployment situation in your life to change? You want your marital issues to be solved? You want deliverance of God? The first thing you want to do is to come to the Almighty God and receive His mercy. He is rich in mercy towards you. He is rich in mercy. You have to recognize that mercy is available for you. For that matter that you are looking for. No man, no man can love you as much as your mighty God can love you. You didn't hear me. You have to recognize that the mercy of God is available for you. No matter how bad a person you may be, no matter how bad, no matter how, how far you have been from your mighty God, the mercy of God is available for you. You have to know that. And that is why I am preaching to you, my brother and my sister. And that is why you are hearing this word. And to you that know the love of God, to you that know the mercy of God, why don't you share this message with somebody who needs to know the mercy of God? Because the mercy of God is what they need. The love of God is what they need. When you enjoy the mercy of God, when you enjoy the mercy of God, that situation that they are going through, the cloud of, 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 of failure in their lives will depart. Because a new cloud will stand over them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You have to see that somebody is offering you mercy. The thing that you are not entitled to, you don't deserve mercy. You, that is what mercy, that's why I defined it to you. you. It is in the power of God to judge you. It is in the power of God to harm you. It is in the power of God to punish you. It is in the power of God to cast you away from his presence eternally. But he chose to have mercy. So you have to recognize that it is that person who is offering you what you do not deserve. You have to also think about it that that mercy is offered to you. You have to accept it. You have to accept it and come to the person who is offering you mercy. Remember, that mercy, if it is genuine, if a person who is higher than you, let me say it like this. If mercy is genuine, I told you, mercy is only given by a person who is higher than you. Not, you know, your child saying, I have mercy on you, daddy. No, it doesn't work like that. 
or your daughter saying, I have mercy on you, daddy. It is you, a person who is of higher status, unless that father has done something bad. It, it's not even right because it is not in their power to punish you. No. It, it's like a state. It's like a judge who has authority over you, who has power over you, who has jurisprudence over you, who has by law to pass the judge. They can mitigate it. Maybe in a crime or an offense you committed, you are entitled to go to jail for five years. The, the judge may say, I have compassion over you. I, have, I will have mercy over you. And then he may say, all right, okay. Because of this and that criteria, because of this and that situation, I will mitigate it to what? To say, for example, to two years. That is mercy. That is the mercy. You cannot say, I have mercy on the judge. No. That is why it is God that can have mercy on me or have mercy on you, my friend. Hallelujah to Jesus. He is the one that can give you that mercy with no strings attached to it. You pay nothing. If that mercy is genuine, you pay nothing. Let me say it one more time. If mercy is genuine, you pay nothing for it. It is free. You pay nothing. It costs you practically nothing. And that is why every other thing in life will cost you, my friend. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Every other thing. You don't even have to pray for mercy. All you need to do is just, I will show you, you don't have to pray for mercy. No, mercy is just waiting for you. It is available. All, you, all I have to do is take advantage of it. That is one of the things you don't pray for. You pray to live. You pray to get healed. You pray to prosper. You pray when you are sick to be healed. You pray for promotion. You pray for deliverance. But for mercy, God says, come, come to my throne and obtain it. I am rich in it. Come and obtain it. Ah. Lord, may God give you wisdom to obtain the, the, the multitude of God's mercy, my friend. That is one of the things I'm enjoying. I don't have man. I don't have woman. I don't have anybody fighting for me except this God. But because his mercy is speaking for me, what about you? Let the mercy of God speak for you. What will he do? He will preserve your life. He will keep you in good health. He will deliver you. He will keep the devil away from you. Remember Job. It was God. He was keeping an eye on the activity of <laughs> He was monitoring the devil. He was monitoring Satan. He said, only go this far. Can you imagine mercy saying, go this far? Do this, but don't do that. The enemy would have wiped us away. He would have destroyed many families. He would have destroyed many homes. But the mercy of God is keeping an eye for your safety, for your deliverance, for your prosperity, for your promotion, for your marriage, for your healing, for your, uh, for your exhortation, for your recognition. It is the mercy of God that is speaking. I will show you in the scripture in a minute. It costs you nothing, like I said. The mercy of God is the only thing that costs you nothing. Salvation costs you nothing. Deliverance will cost you something because you have to go for deliverance. You have to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. You have to stay on the mountain. All of those works. But mercy is easy because God is rich in mercy. Avail yourself to the mercy of the Almighty God. Now, what am I saying is, if God is rich in mercy, you should take advantage of it. Now, I say here, uh, you think about it, somebody like Bill Gates, you know Bill Gates. Somebody like Warren Buffett, you know Warren Buffett. Somebody like um, Alagi Dangote, uh, or somebody like Odetto or, Te or Ted Dollar, you know how rich they are. You know, or any other great man that you know, or any other great woman, uh, you know, that you know. What is the name of this woman? Uh, on TV. She said billionaire. There are many billionaire women, women who are billionaires. If one of these men and women that you know, they have money or they have influence, they call you, they say, I want to bless you. I'm sure you will agree with me that you, you even before they call you, you are calling them. <laughs> because you know they have the ability. You know they have the resources. You know they have the power. You know they have the financial positioning to do whatsoever they say to you because they are rich in that area. If, for example, uh, Bill Gates, who is the uh, part owner of Microsoft, if he says to you, I want to give you a laptop, <laughs> a laptop, <laughs> imagine, I want to give you a laptop, <laughs> or I want to give you uh, an operating system, the latest operating system, <laughs> will you doubt him? <laughs> no, because you know it is in his power. When uh, Alaji Dangote calls you, you want to build a house, and Alaji Dangote, who owns uh, a cement factory, if he says to you, I want to give you a thousand bags of cement towards your building, will you doubt it? You will not doubt it. Eh? Or tell the Lord with his influence, you have a charity and he says, I like what you are doing. I want to support your charity. You know, what will you do? Will you doubt him? Can you then imagine if a man can make a promise? 
and you don't doubt it. If a woman can make a promise and say, come and obtain, and you don't doubt it, my friend, rather than you doubting it, you rush, you don't even sleep. You'll be dreaming about it that that voice that I had, is it a dream or is it real? You'll be dreaming, you will have sleepless nights over the promises that is made to you by a man or a woman, an ordinary man. A man that is here today and gone tomorrow. A man that, they, you know, they, they, they do all the things that you do. A man that, they, they, that does not have control over his own life. A man that, that falls sick like you do. He goes to the hospital. He calls for doctors in the same way that you do. A man that takes medicine <laughs> like you do. Now, can you compare that to the Almighty God? Can you compare that man? Can you compare that woman to the Almighty God? When the Almighty God says, I am rich in mercy, that mercy is available for you now. Bro, sister, if you obtain the mercy of God, and that's why I read that scripture to you in Psalm 51. You know, that's why I read that scripture to you so that you will know the mercy of the Almighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me show you again. That's Psalm 51. It says, have mercy on me. He went to God. That is the only thing. Have mercy on me, O God. According to the word loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. Why? Because he knows that God is tender in mercy. May the Almighty God show his tender mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. When the enemy rushes to consume you and waste you, I waste your life and destroy your home, destroy your children. Maleha, when the evil comes in the wind to destroy your life, to destroy your health, may the mercy of your mighty God, the one you do not deserve, the one you do not deserve, may you obtain the mercy of God. May that mercy speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now you can imagine that God Almighty is bigger, better than all of these men and women. That I, that I mentioned to all of these billionaires, the Almighty God is bigger than them. You know, we are talking about the God, you know, the God who, 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 who does not sleep. This God does not sleep day or night. <laughs> Dangote will sleep. We tell you I'm tired. God is never tired. Or Tedola will tell you I need to go to the doctor to see my, to do my quarterly checks. God doesn't do quarterly checks. That the doctors come to him for wisdom. You know, can you imagine this God who can do all things? Can you imagine this God who sits in the center of the universe? Can you imagine this God who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Can you imagine this God that all principalities, that all powers, all demons, all dominions, all thrones, all altars, they all bow to him? Ah. Can you imagine the one that says what he can do and does what he says? <laughs> he says it because he has the power to do it. He says, I am rich. In mercy. I am rich in mercy. Come, come, come to my throne. Obtain what I have. Obtain it freely. Uh, receive that priceless, costless gift of the mercy and the love of God all around you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can you imagine the wonder all the heavens, all the hosts of heaven bow to, all the four and the twenty elders, all the angels, the congregation in heaven, they all bow to him. That is the God that we are serving. That is the God that is asking you and I to come. Hallelujah to Jesus. That is the one that is inviting you. Mercy is available for you right now, my brother. I say mercy is available for you right now at no cost to you. It has no price to it. It is priceless, costless to you. You pay nothing for it. You didn't have to die. You didn't have to go to the cross of Calvary to die. You didn't have to be slapped several times. You didn't have to be spat and humiliated. No. Can you imagine? Somebody, all the shame, all the ridicule that you should have taken, somebody has taken that already. So you don't have to go that way. It is freely available. It is at no cost to you. Just accept the offer. Just accept the offer of what? Of mercy. That mercy is available right now. Now, I'm going to share three stories with you that you will see this mercy of God that I'm talking about. Three stories in the Bible that you will see this mercy. If the mercy of God can change the lives and the stories of these people that I'm going to share, the same God is alive today. The Bible says he's the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. He will change your life. If he did it yesterday, he can do it today. And he will do it tomorrow. Because he's the almighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let me tell you the first story. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you remember that prodigal son? In Luke chapter 15. 
Luke chapter 15. I will take you there in a minute. In Luke, the Bible talks about the prodigal son. You see, in that story, I'll just paraphrase this very quickly. In that story, there was a father who has two sons. The younger son, all of a sudden, one day woke up and said, Father, I want my own inheritance. He asked his father, say, give me my own inheritance. And the, the, the Bible says the father granted him inheritance. <laughs> I thought that inheritance is only given when the person who is giving it dies. For example, now, you know, he says, I don't, I don't know whether they still do that today. Please educate me. That while the the person is alive, they are giving out. It can. It is rather called a gift rather than inheritance because it is. It is not your. You don't inherit a person who is alive now. Abby. I don't know. Help me. Hallelujah to Jesus. But my own understanding is inheritance, and that's why because Jesus died, we have an inheritance through Him. He died and He rose again. That is inheritance. He has to die. There has to be a testator. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. To his death before you have, but let me, let me carry on. In this story of this prodigal son, he told his father, give me my inheritance. The father, no question, gave him his inheritance and the son went away. He went, he lived a prodigal. Prodigal simply means wasteful, living a wasteful life, living an extravagant life. Why will he not live a, a, a wasteful life? Why would he not live an extra, extra? Did he work for it? He didn't work for it. He did not labor for it. He squandered the fortune. He squandered the inheritance. Eventually, he became what a destitute. Imagine that. He had no place to live. Hallelujah to Jesus. What am I saying? As a consequence, he now returned home. This prodigal son returned home empty handed. He begged his father and said, Father, accept me as your servant. He had a thought in his mind. Think about it. He's, he's, he went back to his father. He realized that my father is a merciful father. He remembered that his father that can give him an inheritance while he was still alive would have him back. He remembered that in his father's house, there are many slaves, many servants who are living better than him. There are many people who are living better than you. Return to the Almighty God today, my friend. Obtain the mercy of God. Take advantage of the riches of his mercy and your life will change in the mighty name of Jesus. I say your life will change in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So what happened? He now went home. The father received him. Oh, my God is waiting to receive you. That's why I say it costs you nothing. Ah, la libra. It costs you nothing. You don't have to pray. All he did was he returned to his father. That is what God is saying to you. Return to me. That's why I read the scripture. It says, come, let us reason together. God wants to reason with you. Remember the Bible says, what is man? That God is mindful of him. And the son of man that thou regardest him. The Bible says, Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and thou hast crowned him with a crown of honor and glory. Thou hast exalted him. You know, what am I trying to say? God loves you, his thoughts for you, if you can read the mind of God. And that is why this message is coming your way, my friend. That is why this sermon is coming your way, so that you can share with somebody that may encourage them in the name of Jesus. The Father took him back. God is waiting to take you back. He is rich in mercy. The father took him back. You know what he did? Not only did he take him back, he called for a party. He decorated him, gave him new clothes, gave him new shoes. That is how God sees me now. God no longer sees me as I used to be extravagant, wasted, lost, forgotten, abandoned, rejected. I am no longer forgotten. I am no longer rejected. I am no longer forsaken. I am no longer abandoned. Why? Because I had drawn to take of the riches of the mercy of the Almighty God. Take that mercy today. Your life will begin to grow. There is no man, there is no woman that genuinely obtains the mercy of God and does not increase. Let me say one more time. There is no man, there is no woman that takes advantage of the riches, the riches of the Almighty God. I am saying this with a lot of a, a lot of emphasis. If you genuinely take advantage and you rest not on nothing else, your grace, your faith is based on nothing else but the mercy of your mighty God. Your life must advance. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. If you doubt it, put a comment there and let me know. Just call me. Let's have a conversation. If your life is not moving and you say you have obtained the mercy of God, then you need to go and seek other methods. Hallelujah. May the mercy of God speak in your own life in the name of Jesus. And the Father said to him, Come. They threw a party for him. There's rejoicing waiting for you. There's rejoicing waiting for me. Hallelujah. There's rejoicing waiting for me. And you know what? When he came home, his senior brother saw him. His senior brother was jealous. The older brother was jealous. You see, 
I have been with you all of these years. You have never, I have labored, I have worked hard in your house. And you have never thrown a party for me. Some of us are like that. That is why we are, uh, we, we are, we are selfish in sharing this gospel. That is where we are, we are selfish in sharing this mercy of God to people around us. We don't want them to be saved. We don't want God to throw them a party like this, you know, prodigal son. We don't want God to decorate them. If you want God to decorate them, because you are decorated. Remember what the father told him, told the sinner, he says, you are ever with me and all that I have is yours. You see, some of us do not know that all the things you are seeking for is already yours. That is what the father told the elder brother. He said, you are always with me and all the things that I have. Go and search the scripture very well. In that Luke chapter 15, uh, he said, all the things that I have, amen, all the things that I have is yours. Everything that I have is yours. Most of us don't know that once you have the mercy of God, you have everything. That's why I say prosperity is yours. Healing is yours. Deliverance is yours. Promotion is yours. A, a, a marriage is yours. Children, fruitfulness is yours. All God is looking for is your heart. When you are truly repentant, truly turned to the Almighty God, when you take advantage of what God is offering you, then you will know that everything is yours. That's what the Father told him. Hallelujah. Let me move on to the second example. Do you remember the, the story of that crippled woman? There was a crippled woman in the Bible that Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. That is in Luke chapter 13. I will find it and read it in a minute. You know, Jesus healed that woman on the Sabbath day. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, people were judging him. They are a Sabbath day. Why are you healing a woman? Do you not know that Jesus is the Lord over the Sabbath? Do you not know Jesus showed mercy on her? He threw away the laws. All the laws that say don't heal, don't forgive, don't deliver, don't promote, don't aladi hezoria. Listen to me, child of God. Somebody who is hearing this voice, they are talking about you for your promotion. Ah, finally, God has positioned you. I said they are discussing your promotion right now. They are discussing how they will give you pay rise. This month, they are discussing your pay rise. Luhuza, Limate, Luadia, because of the mercy of your mighty God, your name will be brought up among those that will be promoted, among those that will be elevated, among those that will be elevated, among those that will be, that will be decorated, among those that will be honored, among those that will be singled out for blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, this month, they are discussing it. Your promotion will be different. Ah, ah, you didn't hear me. They will men they are mentioned. The, the Lord brought it to my spirit. They, your name is me. You don't even know. Your bosses, they are looking at you like this. You see, sometimes they smile at you. It is because a good thought is going through their mind because of the mercy of the Almighty God. Somebody, you are a candidate for elevation. Finally, you have been remembered. I say, finally, the Almighty God has brought you to the remembrance of your bosses in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, your business will begin to blossom. Your business that was not blossoming before will begin to blossom. Finally, that thing that you are struggling in, that you are laboring under, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the laboring, the struggle is gone. Number two example that I'm giving is what I say of the story of that crippled woman. My time is running out. I'm going to round up very soon. Now I'm going to round up. So you can see that story in Luke chapter 13. You know, Jesus was teaching. And then, the, you know, the, a, 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 a woman who was crippled came to him. And you remember, the story is what Jesus had mercy. If you read the story very well, you will see there that Jesus said to her, Jesus laid his hand upon her. And when he laid his, because there was a spirit on her, because there was a spirit of infirmity upon that woman, I don't know what spirit is holding you down, my friend. I don't know what spirit is crippling your destiny. I don't know what spirit, I don't know what power is suppressing your life. I don't know what curse, what charm, what enchantment, what divination. I don't know what is buried against you. For this particular woman, the Bible says it was a spirit of infirmity. For 18 years, listen to me. She came to Jesus and Jesus laid his hand upon her and the Bible says immediately that hand upon that woman is a hand of mercy. Mercy destroys every power of the enemy. I say the mercy of God over you. When God has mercy on you, you will be delivered. Ah, 
you didn't hear me when the almighty god has mercy over your husband that is an alcoholic over your wife that does not have uh, know how to do things that is causing quarrel in your home every time when mercy enters your home uh, you will see your home will be a place of peace in the mighty name of jesus let me move along you see that in luke chapter 13 you can see that from verse 10 uh, to verse 14 or thereabout the bible says the woman went away her, she was mistreated and she began to glorify God. In the name of Jesus, whatever is not straight in your life, whatever is bent in your life, whatever is not moving in your life, whatever is not progressing in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your own life may glorify God, your own story will change. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say your own story will change. Ah, my own story will change in the name of Jesus. My own story will change by the authority of heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number three example that I'm going to give you. Remember that woman that her, her daughter was grievously sick near death. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 22, her daughter was grievously ill. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 22, the Bible says that this woman, she came to Jesus. Even the disciples of Jesus, when they saw her, they said, look, Jesus, let's, let's leave this woman alone. She's disturbing us all the time. But Jesus caught her. Jesus paid attention to her. Because, like I read to you, the Bible says, come. Come. That is your own job, is to come. When you come, leave the rest to Jesus. You see, whoever come and receive it, whoever ask it, they receive. That's what the Bible says. Whoever knock it, the door opens. Whoever ask it, they receive. Whoever seek it, they find. So you leave the finding, you leave the receiving. God says you will find, you will receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. This woman, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter 15, from verse 22, if you read it all the way to verse 28 or 29, there about, the Bible says that even the woman, she recognized that she did not deserve mercy. Because you see, she even used herself as a dog. She said even the Lord, the, she, the dogs, they eat of the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, ah, this woman, <laughs> mercy will speak for you. Mercy is available for you. That mercy is available for you. But this woman, she did not have to fight. She did not have to pray. All she did was come boldly to Jesus. Come boldly to Jesus. And the end of the story is that she obtained mercy. The Bible says in that very moment, if you look at the last verse in verse 28, let me read it to you. Look at it. The Bible says in verse 28, I'm reading Matthew chapter 55 and verse 28. The Bible says there, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Whatever is making you sick, whatever is frustrating you, I send the word of God in your direction. From this very hour in the realm of the spirit, I declare your liberty in the name of Jesus. I say the mercy of God is available to you. Take it now. It is yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is saying, come, just come. Come, let us reason together. Come, let's reason together. It doesn't matter. The Almighty God is asking you, come, let's reason together. Can you imagine the Almighty God wants you to come in with him and reason with him? I can't remember my boss asking me, say, come, let's reason together. I can't remember the last time my father, my mother, when she was, he said, come, let's reason together. But the Almighty God is saying, come, let's reason together. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1. Look at verse 18. God is saying there, come, let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? They shall be as white as snow. Though they be what? Red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Look at what the Bible is saying. The Bible is simply saying, just come. Let's reason together. Come, come, no matter how bad you are, no matter how red, no matter how far you've gone, come and worship. Let me shock you, my friend. Everything you are looking for in this life is in the power of the Almighty God. To access all the Almighty God has for you, has for me, you simply need to accept His mercy. You have to accept His mercy. You must accept His mercy. He is rich in mercy. That good husband, that good wife, that fruitfulness you are looking for, that good health, that healing, that deliverance, that financial breakthrough, that employment, that new job, that promotion, that increase on every side that you are looking for, day and night, the one you are doing night vigil for, ah, my friend, my brother, they are all with him. 
just accept his mercy. They are all with Jesus. All of those things your heart desires, all of those things you are seeking, they are all with Jesus. All I have to this world, accept the mercy of the Lord. Could it be, my friend, that the reason you are in that predicament, the reason you are in that lonely situation is because the mercy of God is far from you? Could it be? Could it be the reason you are in that situation is because the judgment of God is active? Because the Bible says here, it says, but if you refuse and rebel, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 20, let me read it again. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So could it be that the trouble that you are going through right now, that loneliness you are going through, is simply because the judgment of your mighty God is speaking in your life? Could that be the reason why you are struggling? Is it because the mercy of the Almighty God is not active in your life? You are not accepted the mercy of God? Could that be the reason you are struggling? Could, that be, you are, could it be the reason you are in that hard situation? Everything is hard around you. Even when the economy is locked down, some people are making it, but you things are hard. You will not be a beggar in Jesus' name. I say in the name of Jesus, you will not beg for bread in the mighty name of Jesus. As the Bible has said, I have not seen the son of a king begging bread. You will not beg for bread. It, because your father has everything waiting for you. Hallelujah. You know, a man said recently, and I heard it uh, on the radio. Uh, the man said on TV, he says, he said, you cannot stop sinners <laughs> from trooping into a church or into a mosque. I won't mention the name of it. It's a former minister. Uh, a former minister that says so. Uh, no, current minister. He said, you cannot stop sinners from trooping into the church or a mosque. What you don't do is hand over the puppy to them. What you don't do is hand over, my friend, Please, if you are a sinner, come to church. Come to church. We are not going to hand over the pulpit to you, but we will pray from the pulpit for you so that God will have mercy upon you. If you are a sinner, you have not known Jesus, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is slow in judging you. Rather, he is quick to forgive you. And the Lord is not slow concerning his words, concerning you. The Lord is not slow. No. When he says he will punish your, your sins, he will punish that sin. But if you obtain his mercy, that judgment will go. Look at what the Bible says. To show that God is not slack. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Say the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And some count for what? Slackness. But it is his long suffering to us, to, towards us. It is the long suffering of God towards us. Not willing that any man should perish. But that all shall come to repentance. That is the mercy of God. My friend, the rest you are seeking is in returning to the Lord and accepting his mercy. You many people are looking for rest, looking for promotion. All you need to do is turn to God and he'll have mercy upon you. The protection, the deliverance, the breakthrough, the peace, the deliverance from wickedness and wicked people that you are seeking every day. To have victory in this life is simply obtaining, and making yourself accessible to the world, to the mercy of God that is available right now. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every invisible hand against you, in the name of Jesus, the mercy of God, the power of God, the sword of God will cut them off over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And you shall go forth, and you shall go forth with rejoicing, and you shall go forth excelling, you shall go forth praising God. Your mouth shall be filled with testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Finally, I'll use the scripture and I'll round up. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Look at what it says. He wants you to return to him, Isaiah chapter 30. And verse number 15. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In returning, obtaining the mercy of God. And look at what it says. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In, in, in what? In confidence. In confidence. And in quietness shall be what? Your strength. Not in your own ability. Just return. But God is saying here, but you will not return to the Almighty God today. I want to pray for you. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept him today. Turn to him today and just ask him to be the Lord over your life. But the final thing I will say is just accept him in your heart. Just say, Lord, have mercy on me. You are rich in mercy. I have gone far away from you. Be merciful unto me. I cannot help myself. I cannot save myself. I cannot rescue myself. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, you died for me. Wash me with your precious blood. Save me. I turn to you today. I accept your, your death over my life. Wash me in your precious blood and heal me. Deliver me from my evil ways. And 
be my Lord, be my God from this day in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer, you are born again. The mercy of God is available to you. Begin to draw close to the Almighty God. Find a church around you. If you do not have a church, reach out to us at restorershouse.org, www.restorershouse.org, or reach out to Pastor Ben Orija. Reach out on Facebook, reach us on YouTube, and the Almighty God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, all you have to do, when God has forgiven you, make sure you forgive others. Did I shock you? That is the reason why some of us are still in the entanglement. Because you have not, you are holding so many people in your heart. If God forgives you, forgive others. That is what Colossians chapter number 3 verse 12 says. You know, you have to forbear one another and forgive others. If you see from verse 12 all the way to verse 14. It says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let the, rule, the love of God, the peace of God, the mercy of God, let it rule in your heart. And the Almighty God, He will have mercy upon you, upon your household, upon your children, upon your business, upon all you lay your hands upon, and you will succeed and you will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. This week, as the sun rises, shall be a best week in your life, shall be the best week of this month for you. Men will favor you this month. Things shall open up for you. New doors shall open for you. Your bosses, your employers, they will speak highly of you. Your promotion is around the corner. It is your portion. It is your heritage. Receive it now in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. The rod of the enemy shall not rest upon you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed. And you say what? I am blessed of the Lord. I am uncursable. I am uncursable. God bless you. Have a very blessed week. This week is your week. Go and excel. Go and succeed. Go and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Succeed in Jesus' name. Enjoy the mercy of God.